wild steelhead, otherwise known as a native. What does this adjective truly mean? What does it stand for? Does it represent the origin of the fish, or is it just simply an idea? Does it represent something unmolested by man, or something that deeply needs our help and intervention? Webster's Dictionary defines wild as an animal living or growing in its natural environment, non-domesticated and uncultivated. But day by day, our world ever changes and becomes even more cultivated. What hope is there for these fish, and what does it take for them to continue to exist? 2021 was a pinnacle year for wild steelhead, with some of the lowest returning numbers in human history. Today's story is a look into the trials and the adversity these fish are coming to face in the future, and one man's journey of becoming closer to the earth around him and the ever-growing bond between man and these magnificent creatures. This is Where the Wild Things Grow. This last winter, a newfound friend of mine, Lester Fisher, a fellow addict, hit me up on Facebook and he asked me if I wanted to come out and join him on his sacred tribal river uh, and one of the most iconic rivers in Washington state probably to go chase after some monster winter steelhead. So this is a unique experience on this particular river where we're gonna be able to fish from a jet boat. Lester's actually a tribal member in that area of Washington and him and his family have been fishing this river and especially this section of the river there for millennia. So we loaded up the boat, I grabbed all the rods, jumped in the jet boat, and we headed up river. And it's set on it. I'm about to get smacked in the face in the <laughs> So the goal of this trip and being the main reason we came to this part of the country was to try to catch a real true wild steelhead. And wild steelhead is something we're gonna talk a lot about in this episode, but it's, it's something that, it's a big thing that has parentheses around it in my opinion. Wild steelhead exists in wild places. And luckily enough, we were able to be in an area like this that truly was wild. And wild to the extent of, of habitat, of water, of clean water, cold water, everything it takes to make a wild fish was in this area which is what drew us to this place and it's what drew me to being friends with Lester was that he was somebody who was so in touch and had surrounded himself with this idea of living off the land and being wild. Come on, fingers. A lot of times everybody, their snacks are what make the fishing trip. And Lester, my man here, canned up some smelt. Delicious, I can't get it because it's so tender. It's falling apart, bones and all. Tell it good, everyone. It sure tastes good. Mm. You are what you eat, they say. Yep. Get some of smell. You said that your tribe is like known yeah, over history for the smell. Yeah, smell people. When Mist, the creator, came around, he came across when he's come, coming down the coast. When he was making things, he come across the people on our at the ocean there catching fish, they were walking on their hands and they were, they were trying to catch the smelt in the ocean. And he said, no, you gotta walk on your feet. So he turned us up, right side up, because we're known as upside down people. And he turned us right side up and made us walk, walk on our feet and then gave us a dip net to dip the smelt out of the ocean. And that's what we're known for is our whole river, river life. Smelt. These yeah. little guys right here. We got about 400 pounds in my freezer right now. That's delicious, man. We, I always end up missing the, the season down where we're at, and I always regret it, because we only allowed so much, but I've never thrown that stuff in the river again. God, everybody, we are just getting brutalized by this weather here today. As you can hear on the back of, back of Sean's umbrella, it's raining, the wind's blowing about gusts of 15 to 20. <laughs> He's losing his umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're dealing with today, everybody. But my God, how incredible is it? I'd rather stand in a rainstorm in a place like this than probably anywhere else in the world. This is so incredible. You got old growth trees, you got wild fish, you got wild places, and we're the only ones out here. It's, it's just beautiful. It's so such a great blessing to be able to have friends like Lester and people in the awesome addicts community that want to fish together and come out here and get to experience stuff like this. 
you get to sit in, in awesome places and rainstorms. So that first day in true winter steelhead form, we were absolutely getting our asses kicked by the weather. The river was rising really hard, and as any of you have seen, and you've seen in some of our episodes this year especially, a rising river can be the hardest conditions to catch a fish in, especially when you're in the lower echelon of this river like we are. This river is, is very long. It goes way, way up into a national park, and it, it creates a lot of habitat for those fish, and it creates a lot of distance for them to swim. So that being the case, a lot of times they do that really quickly. So it was obvious that that first day was gonna be really just a war with the elements. I stopped to fish this hole here and I couldn't help but just marvel this giant tree. This is the thickest spruce. But this is like, you know, something I want to talk a lot about in this video. And you guys might get annoyed with me a little bit, but it's a, a point I want to make about a place like this. Is just look at this. Look at this marvel of Mother Nature. Look at how big this tree is. These things you can't replace. You know, this is a wild place. So th this river comes out of, out of a preserve, a place that was, will never be touched again. Will never be logged, will never be settled, there will never be any homes or anything. And this, this is what our rivers miss. This is why wild fish don't exist where we live. It's because of these amazing trees, these amazing marvels of mother nature that make up rivers of where these wild fish really live. It takes something like this. You can't replace trees like this. You can't helicopter them into a river. You can do your best to try, but this is what makes this such a wild place. It's these beautiful creations of mother nature like this. The river started to change conditions bad. It started to get really muddy. And this river in particular has a lot of, of glacial sediment on the side of the bank. So as it rains, you can see the water just dripping and drizzling down through these little cracks and crevices. So we started to head down river. We decided to go check out some of the water we were gonna be fishing the next morning. And what a powerful experience that was when we got down there. The wind's probably blowing 35 to 40 miles an hour. I can't believe Lester's even been able to drive the boat at this point because you couldn't really see the definition in the river. But really what it kind of did was tease me to get excited and uh, be ready for the next day because of the water that we were going to be able to fish as that river started to drop. So we found this little back channel here. This little creek comes into the river. So we're like on a, on a braid, on a braid. And the braid is like an island in the river. But this thing looks really fishy as you can see. A lot smaller. This river is pretty darn big, so we're having <clears throat> having to come down into these areas that kind of neck them down and get them in a tighter zone, so they're a little bit easier to locate, a little easier to get get this uh, worm in front of them when this water's dirty like this. But I have a really good feeling about where we're at right now. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Seriously, what was that? Everybody else saw that, right? Yeah. Everybody else, every, all you out there saw that? They shallowed up again too. That was even shallower. Guys, something's in there messing with me. So right about noon, one o'clock, river blew out. No reason to be there anymore. We were soaking wet. I'd already gone through two raincoats and it was just, there was no reason to be down in that lower end of the river anymore. So I talked to Lester a little bit about some other areas we might be able to go to further up in the river system. So we decided to go back to the boat ramp. Lester headed back home. Me and Sean jumped in the truck and we headed up river into some of the most beautiful country I've ever seen in my life. All right, we found it. Found a really fishy spot. Everything's looking great. I'm gonna go park the truck, find a spot to fish, see if we can make this happen. As we pulled up, I looked at the river and it, I just had that feeling in my stomach. I was like, this is it, we found it. The river's rising, this is where the fish are coming. We're up in the headwaters. I got out my Google Earth and I found a couple of spots that looked like they might present a pretty good fishing hole. And so we put the rods on our back, headed into the bushes and went down to the river and I thought for sure it was about to happen. A little bit clearer water, switching up to the red haze. Going a little bit smaller on it this time. It's gonna try to pick some of these pockets apart. Got a nice little hole down here. Got only about two hours of daylight left. It's gonna take some hard work here. Probably gonna fall. Eat crap on the rocks here somewhere, but hopefully there'll be a steelhead on the end of the line here in a second.
So hole number one, nothing. Hole number two, nothing. Hole number three, nothing. And then I really got ambitious. We got down to this one area where we have four by down and we're going through these giant puddles. Damn near sunk the truck. I thought we were rafting at one point and got down to what was the, the pinnacle hole. I looked at it and it was, I told, I told Sean, I'm like, I, we gotta get over there. And there was no way to cross the river. So packed a little on my back, tried to get across, couldn't make it. Went and dropped him back off and grabbed a good river stick, walked all the way across, waded across the river and I finally got into this hole. Nothing happened, no fish, didn't spot anything, didn't see any spawning activity, didn't see anything. And it really kind of detoured me. But what it did was it made me excited for the next day because I knew those fish obviously were gonna be further down in the river system because of that. So we packed up our stuff, we headed into town to find a hotel with all the hope and ambition coming for the next day. Morning routine. Putting on the cold, wet waders. It was a good night last night. Ate some pizza. Enjoyed our night. Found a place to stay, thankfully. Now we're back at it. My man Lester's over here putting in the boat. And I'm really excited for today. Really, all we need for this video is one fish and one good fish. And that's kind of how that's the essence of steelhead fishing in general. It's more about the place you go. We talk about this a lot, but it's more about the places you go and the friends that you make along the way. And I've had a blast already, but man, to hook into one of these beautiful wild fish is gonna be really neat. So perfect conditions, tide's coming in this afternoon. We're gonna go up, fish some of the good water that we ended on last night, head down towards Tidewater, and hopefully hook into a giant. Day number two. We hit the water and it is everything we could have dreamed of. Sun's coming out, the, the clouds are lifting. We had our spot picked out earlier that morning that we wanted to start. So we hit the water, we headed up river and we went fishing. Well, Lester found this spoon in the river yesterday. About a three eighth. Pretty fishy little setup. I forgot my box of spoons. This is about the spooniest river this side of the Mississippi. So I'm going with a spoon. One thing I like to do with those swivels, normally I like, like a dual lock swivel on there, but what I'm gonna do there, squeeze that little thing down right there. Have that little tab on them. Sometimes that'll pull loose if you get snagged or if you hook a big fish. So just to make sure, I'm gonna close that thing up. And of course I added my Two out must add side wash to the end. We're ready to fish. The color of the river today is a lot better than last night. It's gone down probably almost two and a half feet. It's a really big system that we're on, so that water goes up and down and up and down and it drains the whole the whole river drainage really quick. So luckily we got that on our side today. It's probably gonna be about four to five foot of viz by the end of the day. It's about three right now, so it's getting better and better. But we're trying this little Clearwater Creek. We're started up river. We're gonna just slowly work our way down and just fish everything super hard. Hopefully it'll work. Look at Little over there. Look at Little, everybody. He's all running the muck out there. He's looking for the elk. So day two posed to be just as much of a struggle. And really, I, I, at the time, I couldn't really tell why. There was people on that river catching fish, but it was usually, usually on a river that big. It's not necessarily that you're fishing the wrong river, more is just the wrong section. And in this case, being that it was later in the season, being that we had just had that big flush of water come down in 24 hours, I think a lot of the fish had made it past us. Yes, sir. Hold on, John, we're gonna hit. We're gonna hit. Little, little, I'll get you up. Are you out of control? You're out of control. No way. I don't think so. No way. Are you a good spot? Okay. Very, very fishy situation, everybody. Nice little off channel right off the main, main river here. 
the tide's on its way and it's almost another couple hours here it's going to be at high tide so we're really just waiting for these fish to come to us at this point we're getting down to a small part of the river trying to use use every bit of bit of skill and and know-how that we have to just get in front of one and this this is the fishiest situation we've had yet smaller area big rivers can be really hard to fish when you only have two people that's a lot of it you know everybody's got a good fishing buddy but in this situation i wish a couple of mine were here wish marlon or cameron or somebody else was with us here to kind of break apart some of this water it's a big river we only got a couple people fishing so we're doing what we can we should start doing spooky stuff oh my god what the f oh my god what was that oh my god guys i'm talking to lucas holmgren from STS. He's sitting here yapping my ear off. That was so fishy. We're at like the fishiest spot on the river here. We've been talking about this spot. We've been wanting to come back here. Finally, we're here at the right time, Lucas. And, and you guys out there watching. And I just missed the biggest bobber down in that back eddy. Oh, that was fishy. I know I fished way deeper here yesterday. I know I'm not hitting the bottom. Oh, it was Lucas's fault. I was all he's telling me some some silly story like he always does. All right. Well, I didn't realize you were fishing. I thought you were sitting on your pass. <laughs> no, no, I'm fishing, but I was enjoying talking to you. Let's keep right. talking. I just, I just every spot we hit, it was just the anticipation was so high that a fish was going to be there, and the conditions were getting better as the day went along, and we just kept grinding and grinding, and really that was kind of the idea and, and the whole story with the entire year of 2021. It honestly was probably one of the most difficult years that I've ever seen winter steelhead fishing, and not that there weren't fish, not that we didn't have fun, and, and obviously you guys saw a lot of awesome addicted videos this year, and not that it wasn't a good time, but the, the runs were not strong in most of any part of the country, and that was sad to see. And this, this particular area and this particular scenario was, was kind of the pinnacle of that. We came to this area at peak time with a, with a special man like Lester in, a, in an area that's closed to everybody else but tribal fishermen, and we still couldn't pull it together because of that small amount of fish. And it goes back to kind of what I was talking about at the beginning is wild rivers sometimes isn't the only answer. Just because that river's wild and just because it doesn't have hatchery impact and it doesn't have a dam and it has habitat doesn't always mean that those fish are gonna be there and that they're gonna show up. So you were saying that this whole, the whole river channel here didn't, wasn't like this last year. No. That's incredible. So this it goes to show you guys the way these, these wild rivers and these undammed rivers operate and the way that they change directions and, and certain side, I mean, this was all timber last year and the river completely carved out this new channel even deeper into the reservation. So it's, it's insane and it shows you how that free flowing, you know, in, in the, any of the rivers at home, we put up dikes and levees and put a bunch of big rocks in so that it won't happen. But this is what a river has to do. This is what, what it needs to go back and forth and wind through and create new habitat and con constantly refurbish all that ground for those fish to spawn in. So it goes to show you how unique areas like this are and how, how little of them we have, especially at home. The one straight down from the door. Call that praying hands. Praying hands. Oh, and that one on the left is called K Rock. Our old village side is just down there. Just down, you can see that one tall pole standing up over there? Right. That's spot of our old village site. Right at the mouth. Well, this is by far the closest to the ocean I've ever tried to catch a fish, and it is so freaking cool. Literally, that's the, the jaws of the river right there, dumping out into the ocean. You can, almost, you can see the difference of the color in the water, the tide water coming in here. So we're literally trying to catch these things at the ocean. And man, if we hook into one, it is gonna be the coolest fish I've ever seen in my life. So far today's still been tough. I, I think it's just kind of a sign of the year. 2021 was not a good year of the steelhead. And uh, we're here in prime time. It's late March. We're fishing the river in perfect condition. And I really don't think we're doing anything wrong. We're using all the things that I usually catch fish with. I know they work up here in the Olympic Peninsula, but um, you know, man, this is the way it goes sometimes when you're on these trips like this. But this is such a cool setting. If we get one, I'll remember this thing forever. So as I walked down the gravel bar on that last day, going back to the boat, right before we headed back, 
It got, kind of gave me that time of reflection over the year of 2021 and, and all the, su the success and all the heartaches that we had seen in the fisheries and just in the sport in general. And bring that all together, I just want to make that statement of, of re regardless of what your opinion is or regardless of what kind of rod you like to use or where you like to fish or what you like to fish for, the key is, is that we all band together here in times like this and make the right decisions. Again, keeping hatchery rivers full of hatchery fish, supporting habitat and restoration and, and support of wild rivers and wild steelhead and salmon in places that they belong. Places like this river that have habitat, that are untapped and that aren't full of houses and, and bridges and barricades and levees and dams. Those places will never have wild fish, everybody. And we can do our research and we can do these studies and do all this stuff, but there's certain places that we have to support hatcheries and there's certain places that we have to support wild. And the key is to not forget about both of them. Well, everybody, that's a wrap. Lester, couldn't thank you more, man. Uh -huh. Made a new brother out here. Got to fish some incredible water. If you guys want to come up and check out this incredible place with him, give him a call. We'll put some links and, and put his phone number here in the video. But all species, all the time, yep. we're man of the river. Oh, yeah. Man of the river, he does spawning surveys, works for the tribe, nets, fishes, does everything. And it's just an incredible, incredible place to come spend quality time. So we sure appreciate the invite and appreciate you know you we'll be back soon. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> we decided to call it. It was an absolutely beautiful day. Spending good time in good places with good people. And I, I left with a really good friend. I think Lester and I are gonna be friends forever. He was a man who, who cares so much about the fishery and he's so enrooted with his community and with living off the land and, and his culture that it's hard not to love him. It's hard not to love that or find that value in that kind of person or, or in that kind of mentality. I think it's something a lot of us lack out there. So we said our goodbyes to Lester. We jumped in the truck and we headed out. And because we don't want to make this official episode, you guys, we're going to roll a quick highlight reel of all the awesome things that happened in 2021. Here it is. Got him! Got him! <laughs> he keeps Moby digging me down there. Throwing his tail out of the water. I'm just gonna go across. Look at that, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I got him. Nice job, Smuck. Hell yeah. You got him. You got him. Just hold walk him out here. Nice job. Good job, brother. Let's go. Jimmy, man. First deal. Good man. job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Take your time. Really nice. Take your time, brother. Good job, bro. Good job. Oh. We did it. Yeah. 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 Yes. My God! Holy! Oh my God! That's a giant, Dave! Oh my God! It's a giant! Keep your tip in the water. Keep your tip in the water. Keep low. Keep low. Don't let him come around the boat. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I'm tip rat, dude. What is that? Oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. I got him. He's not done. <laughs> That's a really <laughs> fish. Dude. I'm nice. He is destroying you. <laughs> yes. Oh. Good oh. job, Bill. Great job, buddy. Oh, oh wow. my God. That's that. That is Hold a big
Well, we hope you enjoyed 21, you guys. It's been an awesome winter steelhead season, and we appreciate you guys always being along for the ride, and we love all your support. Keep those comments coming, keep the love coming. If you guys wanna see more awesome videos just like this one, be sure to go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down, hit subscribe, turn your bell on, give us a thumbs up and comment below, and you could be the comment of the day just like this guy right here. You guys stay fishy, we'll see you out there.